Today in Apple Motion, I'm gonna show you 10 powerful tips that you absolutely need to know. An issue that has plagued me ever since I first started with Apple Motion was seemingly the inability to publish a gradient from Motion to Final Cut Pro. Originally, my workflow would be to go ahead and click this down arrow on a gradient, select each individual color, come over to the right side, click the down arrow, and select Publish. But this comes with a number of issues, the biggest issue being that I can't add in any extra colors inside of Final Cut Pro. However, the absolutely legendary Misha sent me a comment that showed me how to actually publish the gradient over to Final Cut Pro and it's super dead simple. All you need to do is go over to your gradient and rather than find a down arrow over here, which is where it should be, you need to right click on the gradient and select publish. It's that simple and you will then have all of these features in Final Cut Pro with your start and end points, your locations, you can add in more colors, you can add in your opacity sliders. So this will vastly improve your workflow in Final Cut Pro if you have any sort of gradient. Thank you again, Misha, for sending this in. This has completely changed the way I work with Apple Motion in Final Cut Pro. Clone layers are super powerful in motion. For example, if I had the circle, I could push K, that would give me a clone layer. I could drag that clone layer off to the left-hand side. And now any changes I make to this original layer will also apply to the clone layer. So if we go into the shape settings, we could change the gradient. And now the gradient will be changed on both of these circles. However, there is a large issue with clone layers. If I push play, you'll notice that my original layer is animated in this up and down motion. But the clone layer does not have any of that animation. So if you want to animate your clone layer in the exact same way that your original layer was animated, all you need to do is first go ahead and create a group that contains your original layer. So I have this group here and I'm going to push K, which will create the clone layer from the group, which means that any animations applied onto that original layer will be applied to this clone layer. So if I push play, you can now see that both the clone layer and original layer are animated together. And if I make any changes to this original layer, say for example, the scale, the changes will apply to both layers. Photoshop files in motion are super powerful because you can have all of your images in a singular file, which you then import into motion. However, you may notice that if I were to just click and drag a Photoshop file from Finder, it's just gonna come in as a single layer. There are two ways you can get around this. One is to use Command I to import it, then select it from the import window and push import. It will then ask you if you want it to have merged layers or all layers, which will allow you to have individual layers in different groups. But you can also, from Finder, click and drag and hold it over this window. Then in here, you can choose import merged layers, import all layers, or choose a specific layer. And all of those layers will show up perfectly in Apple Motion. In motion, it's really easy for your view to get cluttered up with all of the different layers you might have in a specific scene. Now you could go over to the layer panels and select each individual layer, but if you want a much faster way, in your viewer, if you go ahead and just push X, that will show you all of the layers that are there in that specific moment. So wherever my playhead is, it will show me all of the separated layers right here. So I can just quickly mouse over to the layer that I wanna select. Say for example, I want the background, then I could switch on over to this rectangle, over to my circle, so on and so forth, saving me a lot of the hassle of going over to the layer stack. Also, if you want to see all of the layers that are in your entire project, but they might not be in the specific frame you are on, you can push Shift X and that will show you all of the different layers in your individual project. When you're editing, it is really important to be able to have a frame by frame edit system. And in motion, it seems like it's a little bit difficult at first because you may wanna click and drag and try and move stuff a single frame, but sometimes it jumps more than just a single frame because it's got all the snapping and it's all really frustrating. But what you can do instead is select that layer inside of your timeline and then push command left or right arrow and that will nudge it over a single frame. If you wanna move over 10 frames, you can push shift, left arrow and right arrow, and that will move it 10 frames. 
Whenever you select a different layer in motion, you'll notice how the inspector is always changing to whatever layer you just most recently selected. However, if you want to lock a layer over here on the left hand side, you can come up to the top right hand corner and select this pin icon. So now, no matter what I select on the right side, that layer will always stay as the primary focus. One of my most used parameters has to be the opacity slider. However, there is a much easier way to access the opacity slider while you're working inside of motion. Rather than needing to select an object, go over to the left side and find your opacity, you can actually go on up to view, layers column, and then enable opacity. And now in our layers panel, we can adjust the opacity as we need it. You can also go up to your view layers column and enable stuff like the blend mode. If you ever need to animate something to go off the screen in motion, if I click and drag, you'll notice how it is completely gone. However, if you push shift and V, that will give you a transparent view of your layers outside of the viewer. So this is really handy if you need to know exactly where an object is off screen, just know that it is not going to show up in the final render unless it is inside of your view area. If you look at my thumbnails, you know that I really love gradients. However, working with gradients seems a little bit more difficult than it should. If I wanted to adjust the position of this gradient, I would come on over to the left side and start moving around the start and end points here. And this is just really frustrating to work with, but there's actually a tool to make this way easier. And that is the adjust item tool. If we come over to where our arrow is, click the down arrow, we can find the adjust item tool and you'll see that it provides me with these on on screen controls, which I can easily click and drag around my viewer. So I can line up my gradients exactly as they should be way faster rather than trying to dial in these exact specific values. And last but not least is how you can reverse a particle emitter. Right now, if I push play, I have this basic particle emitter. Maybe I want those particles to actually reverse and go back to their origin point. To do that, I'll go ahead and select the group that is containing the emitter. Then I'm gonna push K to create a clone layer. From there, let's hide that original layer so we just have the clone layer that's emitting the particles. Selecting the clone layer, if we go over to our properties and locate at the bottom the timing tab, we can click show. And in here we have a bunch of different options to work with the timing. You'll see there is this reverse option. I'll go ahead and check that. And now these particles are actually going to play in reverse back down to their origin point. It should be noted that this seemingly only works for motion compositions and generators. So if you wanted to set this up for a title, then you would be out of luck and you would need to go over into a generator project. If this video was helpful to you in any way, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I show you 10 more powerful tips for Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.